Hey everyone, Joanne from Art Resin here, and today I am joined by artist Shilpi Patel. I'm so excited that you're here with us today. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Shilpi is a geode artist, and this is one of her beautiful pieces here behind us. And Shilpi's going to walk me through how to create a piece of geode art. And I love the look of this work, but I'm not going to lie, I've been intimidated on you know, how to make it. So I'm so excited you're going to show us. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here as well. So. Um, um, this will be like a beginner thing so along with you I know a lot of your viewers are gonna watch this as well and hopefully they can follow along and at the end of it we'll create something really pretty that's so, amazing yeah. I love the color palette you have here so do you yeah. want to just walk us through what we have on the table yeah so we're using some resin and we have crystals that we obviously need for um, geode art and then I'm using Mika powders today um, you're using some resin tins mm -hmm. and you have a beautiful crystal and glitter and all of that fun stuff I'm excited. Should we get started? Yeah, let's get started. So before we start any type of resin artwork, the first thing I like to do is prep work. Mm -hmm. So luckily for us, these boards are already primed. They're primed white. Um, so the only thing we have left to do is take the back off. Right. So we have some tape and scissors. And taping before you start is one of those things that only takes a couple of minutes, but it saves you so much time at yeah. the end because the tape is going to catch all of the resin drips exactly. if there are any. And then you'll have this really nice clean finish yes. at the end as well. Exactly. So when your piece is dry, you just rip off the tape and all the drips come right yeah. off with it. All right, that should do it. And we decided to cover the entire back lip of the panel just in case there was any um, runoff, yeah. right? Runover. So what's our next step now? So this part is actually my favorite part. It's where you get to plan out a design. Um, so we're gonna use our crystals and we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna pick a pattern that we like and kind of play around with it until we're confident enough to start the resin. Okay, perfect. Okay, so just make sure you have your gloves on. Yes, these are glass crystals, right? Yeah, so, so you don't wanna hurt yourself. And I typically like to use like a mixture of different kind of crystals. I mm -hmm. feel like that really gives it a really nice texture. Okay. Like instead of it just being one stone. Um, obviously using, if you just use one stone, that still looks as pretty. Mm -hmm. I just think that with the different tones, it kind of adds a little bit of dimension. Okay, okay, great. So feel free to use whatever you like. So I'm just gonna follow your lead. Yeah. So I'm just gonna watch what you do. <laughs> okay, so I like starting off with these uh, clear crystals first. So I think today what I wanna do is a little bit more of a symmetrical look. So I'm gonna kind of aim for like a little bit of a, I guess, symmetrical type thing. Um, so we'll have this all down. I like to use a lot of these. So you can go symmetrical or you can go kind of abstract, yeah, right? Yeah, abstract too. So for example, like in your case, since you have that big stone, if you <laughs> wanted to make it a center, you could do that as well. It's all about, you know, expression of the artist. So whatever you think um, will look good and whatever you want to do, by all means, do it. Okay. So yeah. So let's say we have this going on. So I'm just going to have a little hill here. And then I like going in with like a little bit of a lighter gold shade and mm -hmm. I kind of like having a little bit of an outline. These are typically a little bit smaller mm -hmm. than these ones. So I think that they complement each other perfectly. Yeah, they do. So, I love the, you've got the clear, yeah. you've got the kind of gold and the silver. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. So we'll do that. Um, so I add just a tiny bit. And they're all slightly different sizes as well, which is Yeah. Nice. That's where you get the dimension from, mm -hmm. you know? Like it looks like you actually, there's so much going on, but it looks so pretty. And then we're just gonna play around with it until you're kind of happy with whatever pattern you like. And yeah, so I think I'm gonna go with something like this mm -hmm. and kind of focus on it being more resin maybe. Yeah, so. And so you're gonna uh -huh. build your design out, like all the, the yeah. blues and the golds right. based on, on yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so I do have a little trip. Um, I sometimes like using a brush so I'll use, if I don't want to use my hands to push it, mm -hmm. I'll just push, like if I want to create oh, yeah. like a curve. So it's really hard sometimes to like do this, mm -hmm. right? And you could even cut yourself because this is glass. So if you use a brush to just slightly push, you can Just to make little it. adjustments. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Go ahead, let's see what you come up with. All right, so I'm gonna use this crystal. Mm -hmm. 
And this actually is one that I made um, using our mold making material. So I found a crystal that I really loved, but I thought it just was a little bit too thick. Yeah. So I used mold making material and made a mold. Yeah, and that's so cool. Yeah, so it's great. So I made it a little bit, it's a little bit shorter mm -hmm. than the original. And then, you know, you can also make them uh, tinted whatever color you want yeah. as well. And you can make it over and over and over again. And it's okay. way more cost effective than yeah. going out and buying like a big totally. honking crystal like this every yeah. time. So, <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to incorporate this. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if I should maybe follow your pattern there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll start with it at the top and then kind of build my rocks around it. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. So, okay. go ahead. And I was thinking of doing maybe an abstract pattern since you're here to kind of guide me because that seems harder to me. So I yeah. think I'm gonna. I think it looks harder, but mm -hmm. honestly, it's pretty much the same process. I feel confident with you here to guide me. You're really replicating like something from nature that's totally organic and natural. So there's not really any any yeah. right or wrong, I guess, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's the beauty of geode art as well. I find is that like each piece is different. You know, like you're probably never gonna find a geode like in the world that's the same as another geode. Mm -hmm. So, like with artwork, that kind of takes the stress, like pressure and stress off of you because yeah. it doesn't need to be perfect. Right. Like, it can just be whatever you think and whatever you want it to be. So. That's always nice. Maybe I should use the brush to kind of create some. Yeah. Because it's looking a little bit too much well. like a rainbow right now. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to build this out, I guess I could just push it away. Right? Yeah. And just, just to add more up. clear there glass. Yeah. So sometimes you'll notice mm -hmm. that these ones come in all different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like, for example, this one's like really huge, right? So if you don't like where this is placed, you could even place it a little bit closer to the bigger rock. Right. So it really depends on personal preference. Mm -hmm. If you find that after we do our layers, because geode artwork is a layering process. Mm -hmm. So if you find that, you know, I've done the layer, now it's kind of washing out the effects of these crystals, we can always go back and add more crystals on top. Right. Right. And so you'll find that we'll be doing that a lot as well as we go through the process. Okay. I feel like you should always take your time with this process mm -hmm. because since these are not glued down, you can change it. You know, yes. sometimes you'll have this layout and then you realize, okay, I don't really like it. So then you can easily move it around, you know? Yeah. This is, it's such a good idea to do it this yeah. way. So instead we're going to pour the resin on top and it's almost going to be like a glue. Yeah, it, it is going to be a glue. Mm -hmm. so. Very cool. You have a lot of time right now to play around with your pattern. So Shilpi, we're creating our design here and putting the rocks down. Are we going to take the rocks off and then put our resin on or how, like how is this um, going to work? So no, we don't want to do that because obviously we don't want to ruin all the hard work that you put in. So what we're going to do is um, once we have our resin mixed with our first batch, with the clear resin, we're just going to slightly drizzle it over the top of the stones that you have. That way your pattern is kind of glued down exactly the way that you have planned out right now, which is the benefit of doing it this way if you had done it another way where you kind of put the resin down and then you put the stones on you won't have the freedom to move it you know because it'll be kind of stuck in place right so. and that's smart for two reasons one because once you have the resin down if you put the rocks on top it's so much harder to move them and adjust yeah. and then two you're stuck with that 40 minute um, working window before the resin starts exactly. curing yeah with yeah. This, this with this technique like you have you can use as much time as you want right like, yeah so smart, I love that. I think I'm happy with what I have. How's it looks yours? amazing. Yeah, yours looks amazing too. Are Thank you ready? You. I think I am ready. Okay, yeah. awesome. So what's our next step? So our next step is gonna be the resin part. Um, but before that, we actually have to put these up on mini stand. Because we don't want our piece sticking to the table when it cures. Exactly. Right? Okay, okay. we did forget so. that. I have the stands right here. Awesome. So before we resin, let's do that. Yeah. 
All right, chill piece, so we're gonna measure out our art resin now. So it's equal amounts of resin mm -hmm. and hardener. Okay, okay so awesome. we're gonna measure out 100 mil, right? So yep. 50 mil resin, 50 mil hardener. Awesome. Okay, so I'll start with the hardener and then we can swap. So some resins are uh, measured by, vol or by weight, ours is always by volume, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we're gonna mix for three minutes, and then you always wanna make sure that you scrape the sides and you scrape the bottom as you mix. We're just measuring a small amount because we're gonna drizzle, right? Yeah, so um, I guess a tip I have if you're working with larger pieces, so I think anything from like maybe 20 to 20 inches, I like doing like taking this extra step and doing like a little drizzle first, like a separate batch, and then doing another totally separate batch for um, the body, I guess, mm -hmm. of the geode, if you want to call it that. Um, I feel like it just puts a little, takes a little bit of pressure off of like you know the time frame. Right. So our resin's all mixed now, mm -hmm. and we're pretty much at the part where we get to drizzle um, the resin over the stones. But before we do that, an important step is to make sure that our boards are leveled. So with the weight of these crystals and any other additional stones or stuff that you use, sometimes the boards are not leveled. Mm -hmm. And as you know, your art resin is self-leveling. So it will drip and sometimes it'll ruin your pattern if you really fall in love with the way you poured it. So we're gonna make sure that it's all leveled. This Perfect. All good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Good, so I'll put so this away. We're pretty much ready to drizzle now. <laughs> And the good thing about drizzling it is that since resin does dry clear, um, it won't you won't be able to see that you know there is actually resin on top. And it's really important that you drizzle it and you don't flood it because what happens when you flood it is that these crystals or these stones or whatever you use sometimes they will kind of lose their shine, right. and that's not mm -hmm. what we want, right? We want there to be a little bit of shine and a little bit of glitter and all of that. So basically we're ready to drizzle now. Good, I am just gonna okay. watch what you do and I'm gonna follow your lead. Okay, awesome. So actually I think I'm gonna start in this corner. Okay. So we'll just drizzle very lightly. And you just wanna drizzle it to the point that every crystal has a little bit of resin touching it. So you don't wanna flood again, like mm -hmm. we said. Just a little bit so that, you know, each little stone has a little bit of resin. You literally are drizzling it. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that you wanna make sure is that the stones that are more near the edge, mm -hmm. you wanna put a little bit more, just slightly a little bit more, um, because if there are any cracks, if you start off with like a deeper color over here, mm -hmm. it will bleed under. I see, okay. And we don't want that. So you're kind of creating like a barrier Yeah, almost? a little okay. bit of a barrier. So we're just gonna do that. Same thing on this end. When you said that we only needed like a little bit of resin to do this, I, I, I couldn't understand how, you know, that would work, but now I see you really don't need very much at all. Yeah. As long as like a very little bit of resin touches each and every crystal, like mm -hmm. it will stay glued on. There we go. Perfect. Right before you get to this mm -hmm. point, I do want to point out, if okay. you're going to incorporate any real crystals or, um, for example, this beautiful quartz that you have going on, mm -hmm. you don't want to drizzle on top. Because if you drizzle the resin on top, yes, it will still act as a glue, but now it's going to kind of emit, like, you know, ruin the shape, natural shape of the crystal. Okay. So what we want to do is I'm just going to have to move this off to the side. Okay. And just remember where this is going. Like we know mm -hmm. that it's going here, so you're gonna put a little bit more resin over in that area. And then we're just gonna take this and stick it on top. So it's almost like I'm gluing it down, exactly. basically. Okay, so just a little bit, but just to cover that space yep. where the crystal was. The space was. where the crystal was, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And now we're just gonna put that. Put the sky back where he belongs. Yep. Perfect. And that's it, secured. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I did notice, even in mine and in yours, um, if you do drizzle a lot, you'll have a little bit of a clear, right? Yes. Do you see this going on right yeah. here? Yeah, I've got so a bit of it too. If it does bother you, you could just use your glove or a tissue or something mm -hmm. and wipe it off. So I'm gonna do that because I don't want it there. Um, okay. Like I mentioned, I do like having a goal like outline, so mm -hmm. I don't want this clear to kind of take over right. the gold, okay. you know? And now, since we do have leftover resin, we're gonna use that for our first shade. And typically, our first shade is gonna be the one that's the closest to the stones. Over here, mm -hmm. I have two. Like, okay. I have one going here, 
I also have one going here. Over here, I don't like having like another gold just because these are clear. So if the gold seeps through, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. So I like going in with a white, but I'm gonna go in with a gold. So I'm gonna add some gold on this end and right over here. Okay, so you're just gonna follow the gold basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we'll do that. So I'm gonna use resin tint and you're gonna use the... I'm using makeup powder. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty much the same concept. Um, you just need to put in not more than, I guess, 7%. Um, I would say, of whatever, however much resin you have. It's always better when you're tinting resin to start with less than more, because you can always yeah. add more if you need <laughs> to, right? Resin tin is really um, highly pigmented, so you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot, yeah. So, so now we're ready, this is all mixed, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna pour very slightly along the edge. Okay. Do you want me to do it first, or do you wanna? Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch Okay, you. awesome. <laughs> so I like to work really slow and um, precisely because you can't really go back after this. Uh, so <laughs> we're gonna pour really slightly. I like doing a thin layer, but by all means, if you want your gold to be a lot thicker, we could do like a thicker layer as well. It just means pouring more. So is your goal to hit the rocks? and hit the board, um, like the I panel? Think I think it's more so like it's the first, like it's gonna be the first color that transitions into, you know, my stones and the rest of the piece, right? So I like having it kind of touch the rocks a mm -hmm. little bit, um, just so I can cover in any like, you know, areas that are uh, not perfect maybe. Like for example, here you'll see that it kind of ate up. Oh my God. Right. So then I'll go back and I'll just put a little bit more. Same thing on this side, and I'll just go over it. See now, if we didn't wipe down the resin that was already there from before, this color would become diluted. Like it wouldn't have been as pigmented. Oh, what a good, a good point. It would have. Yeah. It would have just kind of spread. Mm-hmm. A thing I do want to mention is sometimes, um, since we didn't tape off these sides. I usually do, but if you haven't, mm -hmm. the little leftover that you have, make sure you go in and get the edges as well. Because you want the pattern to be oh, kind of similar. See. All okay, over, so right? we're gonna take the pattern down on the sides yeah. as well. Okay. So this is a completely optional step, uh, by all means. You do not need to know, uh, do this. Like if you prefer your sides to be completely white, you don't need to you know, pick up the excess and kind of have it run down the sides. You would just tape it off and peel it off when you're all done. I personally like having it kind of roll off the edge just because I feel like it gives it a complete look. But yeah, it just brings the whole piece all together at the end. It's really nice. Okay, so now we're ready to mix the rest of our resin for the body of our geode. Um, today, Joanne has decided to go with peachy pink tones, and I'm gonna go more on the blue side with uh, darker and navy colors with a little bit of gold and a little bit of white. So after you've mixed up the colors that you like and you're happy with the shades you've got, we're ready to pour. Okay, awesome. So we have both our colors mixed. Uh, are you happy with the shades you have? I am. I'm okay. excited now. This is the fun part. Yeah, this is the fun part. Okay, so I think that we have generally two techniques that I personally like to use. So we'll go over that. Um, the first one is just where I pour the colors um, ne right next to each other, which is what you typically do see in agates, if you know what that mm -hmm. is, where their colors are literally just like this. Um, whereas if you want to take a more of a modern spin on it, like we have in this piece right mm -hmm. here, which is what Joanne is interested in doing, um, I'll show you how I also achieve that kind of look. So, so it's like a symmetrical versus kind of an abstract. Kind of, yeah, kind of like an abstract versus symmetrical okay. type of look. So um, let's go ahead and we're gonna do my piece first. Okay. So I'm just gonna go over again with the gold because I kind of noticed that some of the gold has faded a little bit in this area, especially over here as well. It's so just, just kind of sure. like self-leveling, right? It's yeah, it's self-leveling. Um, maybe last time, you know, like it was a little too transparent, adding a little bit more powder or a little bit more pigment, that always helps enrich the color as well. So I'm just gonna quickly go over. You wanna make sure you start from one end and kind of drag it out all the way to the end. Okay. Like you don't wanna stop 
and then be like, okay, where do I go now? And let's go again. Like so you want to try to do it one swift motion. Okay. So you have this in one motion. You can go slower or you can go faster. I typically like to go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. and just have a little hair here. So I'll get rid of that. Yeah, that looks good. Same thing here. And now you'll just see that it looks a little bit more pigmented, it right? It does, yeah, what a difference. Yeah. yeah. So typically, now I like to go in with my whites before my actual color. So I go in with this beautiful little, little like shimmery white yeah, almost. Yeah, it's so pretty. And I do like a very thin line of it. I don't like doing like too much of this because I do have a different white that I go in mm -hmm. with. So I'm gonna literally pour it right up against this gold and they'll pretty much be right next to each other. Okay. Again, a thin line. If it goes on top, it's okay. It does not need to be, you know, the best pour. <laughs> I guess just take your time, pour it slowly, and you'll see it set. Oh, that's perfect. See? Yeah. Like over here, I did go a little bit faster, which is why you see those mini waves. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's got over a, here, got a scallop effect. Yeah. yeah. Over here, you'll see that I went a little bit slower, mm -hmm. so it kind of is like more kind of up against that gold. So same thing on this end. Again, if you have it doing that, it's gonna create that effect that mm -hmm. we talked about earlier. But you wanna try to keep it as straight as you can. And you can go back. I know I said don't do this, but we had a little gap mm -hmm. that we need to fill in, so there you go. Now, I kinda have this envision where I like to keep like my pieces to have a lot more white. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go in with this shimmery, like sparkly white. Okay. And I kinda want it to be on this side first. So I'm gonna go in with my shimmery white. Again, just a thin line. Go around, whole thing. Okay, it looks really nice. I noticed that there's a little bit of a gap here, like mm -hmm. it doesn't go all the way, so I just kinda go in and fill in those gaps that I may have missed. So again, trying to make me it as um, as like linear and continuous as I can. Mm -hmm. I love the colors you chose. They're so yeah, pretty. it's like a very like nice shimmery mm -hmm. shade. So this again, I want to do more of this like against this white. So I'm going to do the same thing. It's harder on these edges when you have like nothing over there, but you you would just have to come back to it. So pouring. Sometimes if you don't pour like right against the color, that's okay. As long as you're pouring enough mm -hmm. so that it can self-level and so come a little bit closer. It'll fill that cap you've Yeah, left. and okay. if it doesn't fill it, it's okay. You have a lot more in your cup. Mm -hmm. You just go back ever so slightly, just a little bit, and you pour it and get it to fill in those caps, like that. Nice. Same thing on this side. So we'll have it go across and there you go. Do you see how all these colors are kind of merging in together? They are. They're yeah. not like exactly um, like separate, I guess. Mm -hmm. So if and there's like a little, little space, I go in mm -hmm. and I just push like very little. What happens is that you could add more resin, but I've noticed that if you add more resin, more often than not, you pour a little too much. And then what will happen is it will eat away on this other plain white that we have oh, going. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. yeah. We also have an opaque white today. So I like using different shades of white. I feel like that also creates dimension. Mm -hmm. So again, we're gonna do super thin line. Oh, this is a lot more running than I thought. <laughs> Try to keep it controlled. Okay, so um, at this point, I like looking at the ratio that mm -hmm. I have of white with my gold. Um, sometimes when you add too much white, it will push the gold more into it. Okay. So you kind of see right here, mm -hmm. it's eating up a little bit of the gold, right? right? I yeah. So I personally don't really like that. So again, I will go back 
This time I'll just go with my stick and just add a little bit more in that area that oh, it's eating it up. Yeah. It. So like this area right here, for example, it was eating it up. Mm -hmm. And now we want it to come back. So typically with all my art pieces, I like doing a lot of white, a lot of neutral, and then having one pop of color. Mm -hmm. So the color we chose today was navy blue. Right. So um, I think that if looking at the white right now, this area right here seems like it doesn't have much white going on. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it could use a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more whites and maybe cut it off till here. Okay. Not go all the way. Because if I go all the way, this is gonna end up getting filled with white and then we'll have that much space for the color, right? Gotcha. So yeah. we're just gonna kinda eyeball it. See, the last color I used was this opaque mm -hmm. white. So we're gonna go in, put a little bit more. Just till this point, I think. And then fill it maybe a little bit more. The thing with geode art is it's okay if one shade is you know, a lot more thicker than the other one mm -hmm. because when you add the final touches to it, you can always make little fine lines. Um, whether you want to add glitter lines, that's okay too. More stones, we can do all of that. So you can always tweak. Right, yeah. yeah. So right here we have a little bit of a plain thing going mm -hmm. on. So I'm gonna use the pearly white that we had. I'm gonna add this. Slightly, awesome. Oops, kind of went into that, it's okay. Oh, it's beautiful against that opaque white. Yeah, like yeah. you'll be able to notice, like I feel like in the cuts it's hard to tell, mm -hmm. um, but when we have it against each other, like notice it a lot more. Okay, so now we're ready to go in with the colors. Um, I think we wanna go in with this darker shade. Again, with this color, since it is a blue and we're going against the white, we don't wanna pour it on top of the white because what will happen is that it'll like push it, push the white over and maybe the blue will be too overpowering. So little is always more. So you wanna pour a little farther away, like maybe like like half a centimeter away, I would so say. You're gonna leave a little yeah, gap. Yeah, leave a little gap. Cause it will fill it in eventually and see how it looks. See if you actually like the shade or not. So have it going. Like this is my accent color. Mm -hmm. And at this point you can make different patterns. So if you didn't want to do this, and let's say we have this like little kind of space mm -hmm. and I wanted to leave it like that. If I wanted to create another line going this way, I could do that at this time mm -hmm. and have it kind of split off. Right. So what do you think you want? Should I do that? I think that might be nice. Nice? Yeah, okay. So then we'll have this exact shade kind of split off onto this end as well. So we would have, like let's say it starts here, your line, then you would go and maybe have it spread oh, so like nice. that. I love it. So it looks like there's kind of two coming in. Yeah, but it seems like you've got a lot more control about how the colors are blending when you mm -hmm. leave that gap there. Yeah. Right? So you see how like now they're just kind of sitting on top of each mm -hmm. other. Sometimes what happens is it'll create maybe cells where like white is typically a heavier color. So what will happen is it'll sink and you'll have the pops mm -hmm. of the other like lighter shades sit on top. So that's what creates like little bubble effects. So if you're looking for that in your geode, by all means, you would just pour it right on top, mm -hmm. right? But that's not really our goal today. So we're not gonna do that. With this shade, it's, I know it looks very similar. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not. It's not. So we're gonna try to see how it is. Now we can't really follow this pattern, right? Now mm -hmm. we kind of have to comply with this. So we're gonna pour in this direction. So starting right here. Again, leave a little bit of space. It always helps. You can push it up against, but leave a tiny little bit of space, and there we go. Wow, that is Do you see? beautiful. Like, it's like it looks peacock like peacock blue. At this point, when you leave the space, you can kind of test for yourself. Hey, mm -hmm. do I like this white space, or do I want to fill it? Mm -hmm. um, if, for example, if right now you're thinking, hey, I love this white that's going on, take your white and put and a little bit of white. In. And if you're thinking, nah, I don't really love that, okay, go in with the shade that you want to add more of, mm -hmm. and let's cover it up. You would just go back in, add a little bit more, to this area and cover it up. So nice. <laughs> so we're gonna go in with this green, I think now on this side, and we gotta do it soon before this color ends up bleeding in. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna literally kiss up against the white. And 
I love this contrast or... you've created between the whites and this really, really dark. Yeah, intense. it definitely really helps it Blue. pop out. Mm -hmm. Like I think if someone's gonna pick one accent color, typically I say, yeah, like choose one, work with neutrals, and mm -hmm. it'll really make it pop. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Add a little bit of the green. Perfect. And I'm thinking there should also be, to match this green that's kind of sitting up against mm -hmm. this blue, there should also be a little bit of a green on the side. Okay. So I'm thinking we'll add a little bit. Just a little bit, you don't want it too much because it is kind of bleeding in over there. We always recommend you put other cups away. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, it's not a huge um, deal. Just push this color out, because it kind of blend. And Do you find it okay. easier to work with the resin when it's kind of sat a little bit and it's had a chance to kind of thicken up and no. it's not quite as fluid? Honestly not, because no. I feel like if it's not as fluid, it'll, first of all, it'll cure super fast that if you want to change anything, like at this moment, if I wanted to change this, I could easily wipe it off. Mm -hmm. If it's already cured and you try to do that, it'll leave a little bit of a residue behind and that's not always like the best. So now we're just going to go in and quickly um, finish it off because I noticed it is starting to cure. So we're gonna add a little bit of a shimmer. Maybe add a little bit more there. It's okay if you mess up, like for example, this fell in here, it's all right. When you add your finishing touches, you will cover it up. Mm -hmm. Or you don't even have to cover it up if you end up liking it. Some crystals even have like a mini circle. If you've noticed, like sometimes I'll have a little spot. So we'll go in with a little bit more white and just fill this pattern. Wow, it's really beautiful. It's coming along. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like to cheat if I feel that my colors are kind of going apart. I'll just add a little bit more so I don't have to come back to mm -hmm. it. And then I'll fill it in. Like let's say I want this to be here. Okay, let's keep it here. It's fine. And then go in with whatever shade it is, right? Like let's say, okay, yeah, it's time for me to go in with the sparkle. We'll go in with the sparkle. I love that sparkle. Perfect. A little bit here. And I think that there needs to be a little bit more color going. So this is the green, but this is the first little navy blue that we had. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go in and try to fill in any spaces I think that would have needed. The thing with these base layers is that it's actually nicer if your um, colors cover more area and there's not too much detail because the second layers that you do will have all the detailing in it. So this is just the base layer. This is once, the base layer, once yeah. Once this cures, we're gonna come We're back. gonna build up on top of it. Right. Yeah. So even if you, I mean, this is gorgeous, but even if you're not happy with something that you see, you have a chance to you kind have, of like yeah. correct it or embellish or Exactly. Change. Yeah. Is there anything in here that you think we would need? Maybe what do like you think about like what's happening here where the white is covered? So the... that's actually what I was talking about when, um, the white does kind of overpower mm -hmm. it, it'll create some kind those, of things. If cells. you see the little like cells forming, mm -hmm. it's because the white is heavier, so it's sinking to the bottom now, mm -hmm. and now the green's popping back up. It doesn't happen all the time. Mm -hmm. If it does happen, we hate it, let's say you don't like it, when we draw in our details, we'll cover it up. Oh, like that's okay. Perfect. So it's not a huge deal. We just have a little bit of more to cover. Typically, I just go in with whatever color I have lots of. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have a lot of this white shimmer, so I'm just gonna cover it. Cover any bald spots, I guess. <laughs> or any empty space. Um, a little bit more there. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking maybe we'll just go in with the white. Or actually, let's do the green. And then remember, we want it to go around, so mm -hmm. got it to go around. So good. And I need it to kind of.
kind of continue on to this side mm -hmm. as well. Um, so, see like this is starting to like cure now in the cup, so mm -hmm. it's becoming harder and harder to pour. Okay, so I think this looks good. We're just gonna quickly torch it and we'll be on to yours. It looks yeah. gorgeous. Thank you. So well done. So now we're just gonna torch out any of the bubbles that we have. Whoa. I think it's okay. Yeah, okay. it looks good. All right, so I'm ready to start mine with awesome. your help, of course. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing that you did. Yeah. And my gold has kind of spread and is a little translucent, so I'm just gonna buffer it up. Okay, so I'm ready for... Um, <laughs> okay. I feel nervous. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Okay, so... Okay. The technique with this is that mm -hmm. we want the colors to be a little bit more faded. Yes. So what you want to do is you want to pour the colors first mm -hmm. and then go in with your whites. Oh, you remember how we did yeah. the whites first? Yes. And then we did the darker colors. In this, you do straight off the bat your dark color and then we're going to go in with your whites. Okay. So your shades are the pinks. Yes. So wherever you think you want to keep a line. So if you wanted like, let's say a pattern to go around this way, that's cool. If you wanted to split it, that's cool too. Um, whatever, okay. whatever you like. All right. You want to move fast a little bit, um, but not too fast either. Cause if this starts to sit, it won't give you the nice gradient effect. Okay. Like we want the whites to blend in with that. Okay. Now I know I said I was going abstract, but I'm kind of still following no, the lines a little bit. Good. So if you wanted that to like kind of cut over this, you could do that as well. Oh, so I could do like... Yeah, like you could interrupt the color if you wanted to. Cause... Let's interrupt the color. And then I would probably add maybe one more line, a little bit of mm -hmm. color, like maybe on this end or on that end or something. And then we're just gonna basically flood the entire canvas with with white. white. Okay. Yeah. With different shades of white, but yeah, that's pretty much the idea. What would I do in these edges up here? Oops. If you like to add colors, mm -hmm. um, you can do that. So you could maybe put like a little bit of your whatever shade you like. You could go in with the gold, or you could even go in with the white. And what happens if I drip on my rock? <laughs> you might just have to wipe it off. All right. <laughs> we'll just flip it over. Nobody needs to know, <laughs> except all of you. <laughs> Maybe I'll do like just a little, I don't know, just a little vein of it. Yeah. Just to kind of break up that yeah. white. I do notice it's getting a little tacky, so mm -hmm. it may not work out. Okay. Um, so we just need to work fast. Okay. <laughs> That's the only thing. <laughs> Maybe I'll do one more. Yeah. Just a little. I'm not even gonna connect it. I'm just gonna leave it free floating here. Yeah, and then honestly, after we do the lines and everything, like it'll all come together. Okay. All right, so I'm ready awesome. for my white. So you have a little beautiful pearl white going. Mm -hmm. So now with this, you want to literally pour on top of the color. Okay. But not completely on top, more like you want to cover it, just so close that you're flooding it. Okay. So we're not drizzling anymore, we're actually pouring. And I'm kind of filling in the entire thing? Yeah, so you could do two things. You could have just followed this line all the way through, or you could just do like this little area, okay. area by area. Let's start this way here. Am I going yeah, quick enough? Yeah, no, that's perfect. And you're doing such a good job. Do you see, like after, go ahead, finish that line. Do you see right here? Mm -hmm. You see how it blended? Mm -hmm. And we gave that you that effect. That's what you want to do. If you leave okay. the space, you're going to get the same effect that you, I got going here. Oh, right, like the- the um, are going to be next to each okay. other. Okay, okay. We want, like, and I think what you're going for is more of a- Soft, you know, organic kind yeah. of, yeah. So, what would you do? Okay, 
So we have more resin, mm -hmm. and now um, you didn't mention that you don't like this peach, right? Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend, maybe take the popsicle stick and kind of pour over the peach ever so slightly. Not in the center, more on the side, so cover okay. this entire side. Okay. Just try it. I would test it out right here, just so to see if you even like it. Um, there you go. Now a little bit more on top. There you go, like that. Okay. And then try covering like this area as well, and it'll give you a little bit of a less, um, such an opaque peach type of shade. Yeah, I think that's what I don't you like because it is very opaque. Yeah. Awesome. So now you're gonna pretty much, if you do like that effect, mm -hmm. maybe continue it on here. Okay. Like Good. magic. <laughs> so can I do the same in this so little center I would gap? recommend before you do that, these colors are bleeding right next to each other. Okay. So you want to quickly go in with whatever it is, the white, mm -hmm. to kind of interfere that. So do it in line, right across, and follow it all the way through. So all yep. the way through? Okay. Because they're all bleeding in together, and the longer you wait, it's going to be harder to cover it up. You don't need to use the popsicle stick. You can actually just pour it straight out of the cup. Okay. If you're comfortable with it. I, you know, I started with the you stick, like the so I'm, stick? Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to continue with it and just in this little bit here so I don't go yeah. too crazy. And then a little bit over here. There you go. Do you see how it's pushing the shade out? That's what we want. Oh, okay. So this pattern, like the white kind of just stops there. Now it's totally up to you if you want it to continue this way or if you want it to go down. You can even have, want to do both, like that's okay as well. I think it looks very busy to me. Oh, the piece? The whole piece looks very busy. Really? I think it looks nice. If you like, what what parts do you think look too busy? I think it's so busy here. I don't mind like this happening. I don't. I'm not fond of all this, but I guess we can cover that okay. with gold tomorrow. <laughs> no, so then it's gonna get more busy. So then, well, what I rec what I would recommend mm -hmm. is if you know that hey, I don't. I'm not digging this at mm -hmm. all. Take like a scraper, scrape this off, and cover it in white. Because that way, like, you won't have to deal with it. I think you're talking about this peach, right? Like you don't I think, like this. I think it's. I said abstract, but I think I actually prefer. The symmetrical. symmetrical. And okay. I think it's this line here and this line here. Okay. I wish this continued. It's like this right there. Oh, I see. So if you want, you could take a fresh popsicle stick, push it mm -hmm. maybe, and let's have it like, let's put more white here. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay. So as soon as you, you would just like put your popsicle stick here and shift it. So just this whole thing. Yep. The part that you don't like. Yep. Shift, shift, shift. And then I would probably just clean this up a little bit more. So let's say you really don't like this. Let me thin it out. Pick it up. Let's get rid of it. So I can make this all one line. Yeah. Is what I would like to do. And then if you think it's too thick, that's fine. Let's pick it up. And now go in right as soon as we pick this up. You mm -hmm. want to go in directly with that and cover it up. And if, it, if you think that, like, try to get as much of the color as you can off the board because we are going in with white. Um, but I think we did a pretty decent job. And then now you can just go in okay. with your white. I would go in with the opaque, if I'm being honest. Okay. Because it is a little bit more, like, it's opaque, so maybe it'll do a better job. So maybe continue this over. Like, no, do you see how this, there's this white? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so have it kind of go over that. Yeah, there you go going, you're doing a good job, and then have it follow around this way. Yep, and then all the way through. Look at that. You like it? Is it better? I think it's better. Okay. And now that the white is spreading, I mm -hmm. would go over, um, I would go over like on top of the white with the like gold white that you have. Yeah. Okay. 
In what and way? And just create, like right here if you want to. You don't even need to. If you like it the way it is, leave it, and then maybe just fill this area. Or could I take this line and follow you it? You don't need to follow it. Oh, uh, well, if you like to, if you want this to follow through, you could. That's what you're going for, right? Like uh, following? I think so. Okay. The biggest tip I have is that if you are thinking, hey, I don't like this at all, like, you know, this, like, this is not what I'm going for, mm -hmm. we still have the other stones that right. we can add. And I feel like the stones do a much better job of hiding any, like, little imperfections. So don't worry too much. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I think it looks good. I don't think we want to add any more details. So okay. now what I would do is just... Fill in all the gaps that you have on your board mm -hmm. with whites. Okay. Yeah. And then you're pretty much going to be done. Okay. It's beautiful. I think here, I don't know, it just looks like... I actually like that a lot. Do I you like really? How it's, yeah, I love, I love how it's like, you know, like not linear, but it looks more natural. I could keep working on this all night, but <laughs> I think I'm done. Okay, <laughs> not looks, super crazy no. about what's happening here, but. No, honestly, I really like it. I love it. It's a totally different vibe. Um, <laughs> I know you're not exactly happy, but it's our first <laughs> no, layer. No, so I'm, I'm happy. If, if you guys ever feel discouraged, you know, that, hey, this is not turning out the way I want or the way I pictured it, do not stress and don't worry about it because you can come in the next day like we will and we'll add some finishing touches. And a trick is to cover up any spots that you don't like. Mm -hmm. So this little section that you say you're not a big fan of, I personally like it, but if you don't like it, We'll cover it up, okay? So. I thought I was an abstract girl. Apparently, I'm linear, so <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but I do have to torch this before yeah. the resin starts getting too thick, so I'm gonna grab my torch here. And torch out the bubbles. There we go. Thank you so much, Shelby. We're gonna put our dust covers on, leave these guys to cook overnight, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. <laughs> hey everyone, we're back, and you may have noticed that we switched sides today just to get a different perspective. New day, new side. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our pieces have dried. And Shilpi, what are we gonna get up to today? Yeah, so today's all about detail work. Um, this is pretty much my second day process whenever I'm making my pieces. Um, I just do wanna mention that it is completely optional. So if you love your piece, the way it's secured, um, you don't even wanna change anything, sign it off and you know, put it on a wall, display it wherever you want to. Um, and if you are looking at your piece and you're thinking, okay, I don't like certain areas. I know me and Joanne kind of have <laughs> our own feelings about our pieces. So we're just gonna use detail work to basically cover up our mistakes or cover up areas which we don't love and basically turn it into something that we do really like. Great, what materials are we gonna be using for our detail work? Yeah, so um, you guys can use anything that you wanna use. Today we're using some paint pens to draw some lines and do some fine work. And we have some glitter going on for glitter um, glitter lines and some stones as well to cover up some spots. Amazing. Yeah. And I love Shilpi shared a fantastic tip with me today. Do you want to tell everyone about the, the runoff? What you do yeah. With the runoff? So with our like pieces that do drip, um, I like to save these. Some people do go throw them out, but I save them and I actually like using my pens on these pieces first just to see like, okay, do I actually like the shade of gold or do I need a different shade of gold? Will it match the colors that are actually on my piece? Because what happens is if you go in with a pen on your piece and you realize, okay, this gold is not complementing any of my tones, it becomes a lot harder for you to change it, right? So it's just a little tip that I like to use. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's amazing, yeah. I love that. Before we start, mm -hmm. we do want to make sure that all of our stones have actually stuck on properly. If you guys remember, um, our first step was to drizzle a little bit of resin, right? Yeah. And use it as glue. So what happens is if you didn't drizzle every single piece, um, there will be pieces which have not glued on properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift these canvases, we're gonna flip it over and smack it a little, you know, shake it, do whatever you wanna do, make sure there's no loose 
pieces. All right? All right. So let's, let's do it. That's amazing. So you just wanna shake it really okay. good. And it's not a big deal. Like if you notice that, for example, if there was a huge patch that mm -hmm. was missing, like we are gonna be working with resin today. Yeah. So what you could do is put a little bit more resin on and then put the stones back in the places that it belongs. Yeah, so, so great. There's so many opportunities to like adjust, tweak. Yes, of course. As you go, so okay. that's great. So awesome, I just wanna make sure it's proper. Okay, that's so great. our pieces are all Good to go, resin is cured, stones are in place. What's first? Yep, so um, what I like to do is I like going in with the color that I have the majority of. Mm -hmm. So I love having negative space in my artwork, so you'll see a lot of white. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go in with my white pen and just add a little bit of detail in the spaces where I see there's a lot of white. Okay. <laughs> so let's test out this pen first. Make sure it's good and flowy, perfect. So it's ready to go. And then I just basically go in and draw lines where I feel like it. Okay. So yeah. So I always like to go slow. I feel like these pens are really, really good. Um, but if you stop, it'll leave a little drop. So try to follow all the way through. If you have to take a break, it's okay. Um, It's very subtle. It's very hard to even see sometimes, but if someone's gonna come really close and look at your piece, I feel like they'll pick up on the very slight, slight detail. I was just gonna say it is really subtle, but it actually makes a real difference. It does, yeah. yeah. Um, and you wanna make sure with these lines that we are following it through, because mm -hmm. we did have these edges painted. Yes. So just to show you guys, let me show you the side. So definitely we want any lines that you draw, whether it be gold, blue, pink, <laughs> um, you want to trace it down and make sure it follows through. Yeah. Make sure it's following through. Awesome. Perfect. So it really depends on you and what you prefer. I feel like if you like having these lines and you want to add a lot more and make it a lot more busier, mm -hmm. You could do that too. Um, with this piece, I do want there to be big chunks of colors. Like I don't want it to be like more of a ribbon or striated appearance. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of leave it because I do like that one line. And I'm pretty much gonna go around here now and any other places that I see where, okay, I could use a little bit of a touch up. I like that we have this, if you can see, like there's a little bit of a split mm -hmm. and this um, like shimmery and then there's a little bit of white. So, but right here, it kind of blends in. And I do like that. So I don't want to cover it up with a marker like or anything, but I'm gonna still do another line to kind of make it seem like it's all together, okay? I love that white sparkly. Um line that, that makeup powder you used, it looks so nice. Right, it's beautiful. And honestly, I feel like that's the benefit of using different shades of white. Like, you don't just have to use paint or um, a tint or even like makeup powders. If you use a combination of all three, you could totally skip this step and you know, you don't even need to add all these lines. And I think I'm gonna probably do two more right here. So, let's have it rotate it. So I actually didn't notice this before, I just noticed it now. There's a very tiny like circle. Do you see that? I do see that. It may have just been a mistake on my end when I was pouring, maybe mm -hmm. a little drop fell and I forgot. Um, there's even this little ripple, ripple effect kind of going here mm -hmm. and even here. So we even have a couple like pretty much all over my piece actually. So what I'm gonna do is instead of drawing a line, I think I'm gonna draw a little circle around it just to kind of draw your attention right. to that. So you're gonna highlight yeah, it. Yeah, so highlight it a little bit. So we have one right here. So maybe draw a little circle, kind of like that. We have another one right here. 
Again, you can totally cover this up. Like if you don't like these circles that, or these cells that are appearing in your piece, and you're thinking, hey, like I don't wanna do these circles, mm -hmm. put a little bit of glitter, or you know, we have like more stones that you can add in that place. Or worst case scenario, you could just do a totally different layer, like replace this entire piece and do right. a complete new layer and start over. But yeah, and then one right here. Oops. Like a happy little accident, <laughs> <laughs> as Bob Ross would say. <laughs> So I think that's more than enough with the amazing. white. Thank you. Yeah. It's very subtle, okay. you know, like you don't want, I feel like I didn't want the attention to be on my lines. I wanted the attention to be more on this kind of action that's going on, right? With the different shades that we see, even the little cells that are kind of happening in my like darker tones. So the next step now would be to go in with my gold. So I'm not actually gonna have lines um, of gold in my final piece. Mm -hmm. This is just a little tip slash trick I use. Um, we have this gold glitter, so we are gonna be making uh, gold glitter lines. So I use this more as a, um, like a sketch, I guess mm -hmm. you would say. Like I would just kind of draw where I want the lines to be. So like a guideline. And, yeah, like a guideline. And then you just trace it with a resin and it, all, again, takes off the pressure. It takes off, um, like, you know, any chance of you making a mistake with the resin. So you can use that. So we'll test this marker. Okay. I think it's good. Again, this is a very thick tip marker, like it's pretty thick. So um, making like fine lines with this, like I mentioned, is gonna be a lot harder. You can do it if you're very good um, and have like good precision, I guess, but it becomes a lot harder to do that. Right. Yeah. Whereas, you know, it's typically supposed to be that thick. Mm -hmm. It's gotta so, choose yeah. a little tip though, right? So yeah. Can work with that. So we wanna make sure it's flowy and good. Mm -hmm. Now this part, um, it can be a little intimidating because it's such a bold color. Mm -hmm. With the white, you know, it's a little forgiving. It's in, blended into the background. It's not gonna catch your eye necessarily. This will catch your eye. So you wanna put it in a spot where you really desperately need a cover up because um, it'll do an amazing job at covering up any mistakes. Or you can put it in areas where you're using it as more of a highlight, which is what I'm gonna do in this piece. I love like absolutely love these shades. I love that how dark it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to put too much gold where you know your attention kind of just goes to the gold and it doesn't go to the navy blue and the greens that we have going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline these with a little bit of a gold. And remember, it's not gonna actually be this tip or like, sorry, this pen, it's gonna be the glitter. All right, so we'll flip this. Sorry, thank you. You're welcome. Sometimes you have to think a little bit, right? Like, there's a lot of stuff I love about this and there's also things that I don't like about it. So for example, these cells, I feel like it kind of gives it a little bit of a natural finish. Yeah. Like when you look at geodes, not everything is perfect, right? Like we discussed. So I feel like I don't necessarily want to cover it up, but at the same time, if I put like a gold down here and cut into the white, we're going to have a line of white between that, which, if you think about the whole picture, you're gonna have a lot of detail. It's gonna look like I painted a white line, but that's not what I want. So even though I love it, unfortunately I am gonna cover it up. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. So, so it's gonna, gonna give you kind of a crisper edge, I guess. Yeah, the, okay. it's gonna be a little bit more defined. So we're gonna go along this edge and it's okay if this shade breaks apart, like you'll see right here, it's not, you know, maybe not perfect, mm -hmm. but this is just our guideline for where our gold is gonna go, like our glitter gold is gonna go. And it doesn't need to be straight. If you wanna add more waves, you can do that too. So I'm gonna do that. Add a little bit of a wave going on. And this one does not need to be perfect. So it's all right. And then we'll have this come through. So this is where I'm thinking my gold glitter is gonna go. Again, if you guys notice, this is not the best line, but it is a guideline, so it's okay. I'm not too worried about that. Let's rotate it again. And I think we're gonna have my last glitter line probably going across here. And I think this is good. It is gorgeous. I love Thank it. Thank you. 
I love the, the, uh, the gold with the, uh, yeah. the dark blue, it looks so nice. So after your glitter lines, it doesn't need to end there, okay? Like that's obviously not the last step. If you do the glitter lines and you realize, okay, this looks good, but let me add a little bit more, by all means, add a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but I would always say start with less and build up on it yeah. because once you have too much, you can't really go back, right? Exactly. So, good deal. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm good with mine. Okay. Let's move on to yours. All right. So what are you thinking of doing with yours? Well, I loved your the white line, so I think okay. I'm gonna Follow your lead again and put some white maybe in, in this area here. Okay. Maybe down here a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you what I'm going to do next. All right. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, Perfect. so that's done. So I'm thinking that this area here might be kind of really white, busy. So okay. Maybe okay, I see. Do yeah. you think, would you do both of these or just like one um, or the other? Well, what are, what's your game plan here? Like, do you want to still cover this or are you yeah, not so thinking that Yeah, so I think we're going to use okay. um, these tinted glass um, okay. crystals in this area here. Okay. So maybe I should put it in this area. So maybe let's save that for the end. Okay. Like, let's see where you want to place the glass and then maybe draw your line according to that. Okay. That way you can like kind of mimic the shape of the, like where you're placing your glass as well. Good so. idea. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna um, put these stones now here. Okay. So what we did, Shilpi taught me, you can actually tint, maybe you should explain it. You can yeah. tint your crystals. <laughs> so um, with any crushed glass like this we just bought, um, you could even like, if you have like other glass pieces at home and you want finer ones, take a hammer, put it in a bag, smash it into like a size that you like. But basically the whole idea is that if it's clear or these are silver in our case, um, for Joanne's piece, she wanted like a pinkish orange, like a corally colored mm -hmm. glass. And if you can't get your hands on those, if you have alcohol inks and you like the shade of, um, the, of the alcohol ink, you could put this in a little cup, add a few drops of alcohol ink, and it'll just basically stain in. So, yes. which is what she's done right here. And she's gonna show you. Yes, you know, right? I have to make yeah. a little bit more. So, so let's I'm do just that. going to, I'm just gonna add to what I have here. Yeah. Literally, you need a drop. That was all I did. So I've got pink, pink, orange, and this is copper. Awesome. And I guess the alcohol ink works best because it's so fast drying. Right? Yeah, it's fast drying. So you won't even have to wait too long. And this color is absolutely, like it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. It's like a perfect match. Exactly, yeah. and I love it. If you do think that it's a little wet, um, another tip that we have is uh, pour it down on paper towel mm -hmm. and just kind of sandwich it a little bit. See if the color is bleeding onto the paper towel. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Awesome. So, okay. I think we're gonna try. <laughs> I know you <laughs> like this area, but it just, I don't know. It's like, it, she, it flows. She like, yeah. <laughs> it flows so beautifully and then it just kind of interrupts here. So I think I wanna try and like- Cover it? Okay. Yeah, cover it. Yeah. I'm gonna. Oh man, it's hurting my heart. <laughs> it's so pretty. You're making me second guess now. No, no, honestly, it's your piece. You do what you love. So I know for sure I'm gonna put them here. There you go, yeah. This one doesn't belong either. Um, and I know for sure I'm gonna put some up here around my crystal. Okay. All right, I'm gonna rotate it back. So again, we're kind of using the same technique that we did yesterday, where we put down the crystals in a location and pattern that we liked, and then we drizzled some resin on top. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do the same thing today. Okay, I think that's okay. good. Okay, awesome. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was, I just like I made this, um, crystal piece with mold making material, I also made some little stones. So I used the larger glass shards and made a mold yep. and made these guys. So I'm not sure if I'll use 
these ones will just get lost in here, but yeah. I'm thinking maybe I would add some of the um, kind of gold colored ones as well. One side is kind of matte and the other side is glossy, so I'm just gonna, again, like maybe I'll do like five. Looks Something good. like that, I can adjust it, but yeah. Okay, good, so what's our next step then? In both our cases, we're gonna have a different situation. Joanne's gonna be using the resin to basically glue down any pieces that she put on. So that includes the orange glass she has going and even these bigger chunks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna be using the resin today to make my glitter lines because that's what I've decided. So we'll make a batch of resin and we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, we're back. So we've got our art resin already mixed and ready to go. So yep. the first step now is I'm going to adhere my little um, gold stones and then I'm going to drizzle to secure these kind of coral um, glass pieces. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is use one of these pipettes mm -hmm. here. So because I don't want the resin to spread too much, I'm not going to drizzle it from the cup like we did before. First, I'm going to adhere these guys. You could use a hot glue gun too if you wanted to for this. Or any type of like industrial glue, yeah. anything like that. Okay, so I've got um, the coral pieces here, I've got a little bit here. Okay, so perfect. Okay, so I put my resin down. I just took a popsicle stick just to spread out any bits where the resin um, started to kind of spread. And I think I'm happy with this. So Shilpi, we're on to your piece. Yeah, so um, for my piece, I'm actually gonna do glitter lines. Um, Joanne decided to opt out of it. That's okay, mm -hmm. you don't have to do that. <laughs> uh, so I'm working with gold glitter here. It's just plain gold glitter you can get it anywhere. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix a little bit of resin. You don't need a lot because again, we're only making lines, right? We're not flooding this entire canvas. So even this is roughly four ounces you would probably only need two maybe, I would say, um, for this size, which is roughly an 18 by 18. So let's go ahead and mix our glitter in. <laughs> okay. I like using mini glasses. I feel like it's easier. And then you want to put a lot of glitter in. Now, if you were thinking that I can put like, let's say this much and it'll be okay, it'll be fine, but your glitter won't be as pigmented, right? Because mm -hmm. you have so much of the resin that it'll be more clear. I like my pieces to have a lot of glitter mm -hmm. and I want it to be strict glitter. So I put a lot. And I think that helps to create some texture as well, doesn't it? We're having a lot of glitter. Yeah. yeah. So then we're just gonna mix this. And yep. it does get thick and that's what you want. You want it to be this kind of consistency. It's like a slurry almost. Yeah, yeah. like it's, more, I don't know, like gooier? <laughs> that's well, the other thing too is that we made the resin ahead of time and let it sit for a little bit, right? Yeah. And that's to give you a bit more control. Exactly. Yeah. So I find that when you're making glitter lines, you want to let it sit with art resin. You do have a working time of, correct me if I'm wrong, 40 minutes? 40 minutes. Yeah. So um, we have let this sit for about 20 minutes now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice and thick. Um, it's not fully cured, but it's kind of getting there. <laughs> and that's what we want. Yeah, we don't want it to start yeah. self-leveling. Exactly. Much, right? If it's too runny, what's gonna happen is you're gonna make a line thinking, hey, this is beautiful. Um, it's a nice like di uh, diameter like shape, but then as it spreads, it'll get thicker and mm -hmm. thicker. And maybe that's not what you want, right? So, so you got a Ziploc bag. Yep, got a Ziploc bag. I just like using like any cup to kind of create a little um, space for it. You could even use like cake bags if you guys are into decorating mm -hmm. cakes and things like that. Sandwich bags. So I just put almost all of it. Why not? We have to use it anyways. So as you can see, it's a little runny. This is a little bit more runny than I would like it to be. So we'll maybe let it sit for another few more minutes mm -hmm. um, and maybe come back to it. 
The resin is getting warm, so once it starts it getting, is getting warm, warm, it's yeah. going to thicken very quickly. Zip it up, and basically it's going to be ready to use. Again, we have our lines, so I'm just going to be tracing it. So we're going to cut a very small hole, like a very, very tiny hole. Oh yeah, that's really small. It's so small. Mm -hmm. So this is just a piece of runoff resin that we have from yesterday, and I'm just going to see. It's super thin. You see that? Oh gosh, yeah, that's really yeah. thin. So I like mine to be thin because mm -hmm. it's still runny. It will self-level, so it yeah. will get thicker. Yeah. Okay, um, if you wanted to go with a thicker line, by all means do it. Mm -hmm. Again, with this, you guys can practice a little bit. If I think, okay, this is too thin, let me add one more. Go around and over, put a little bit more, and now it's thicker. Amazing. Right? Great chance. You can always go from thinner to thicker, but mm -hmm. it's hard for you to go from thick to thin. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just gonna trace over these lines, okay? And we are gonna let it run over the edge. Um, not purposely, it will, like gravity will do its thing, so. Do not stress. Okay, let's go. And we wanna move fast. It's all right if your glitter line is not directly on where it goes. Do you see how there's a little bit that I kinda got? Yeah. It's a little wet, I can wipe it. And do you see, like I made it thin, but yeah. it's still spreading, it's spreading, so it's getting thicker yeah. and thicker. Yeah. Now if I had started off with a hole that was this size, mm -hmm. it would have been a lot more thicker. Yes. And that's okay, if you guys want thicker lines, make a bigger hole, right? So let's do that. And now we're gonna pretty much do the rest of it. Um, we have, I think, one more line left. I'm honestly not loving this little point. That's okay, it might happen to you guys too if you guys make a line and you look at it later and you're like, ah, it's not really going with what, I'm, what I wanted mm -hmm. initially. It's okay, you, this is why you drew it, right? So you can make your line, alter it a little. Here there's like a point, I think instead of a point, I kind of want it to curve off. So I'll just make the change now. The bag is starting to get warmer. Mm -hmm. So definitely it's like at the end. Almost. There we go. We'll have this curve. So pretty. Amazing. So at this point, I like, I'm a little short, so I have to go on to be chose. <laughs> I like looking at it from a little bit of a bird's eye view, mm -hmm. trying to see, okay, where do I think that there's not enough balance, right? So I'm looking at this, I like it, I think it's good. I feel like I could use something going on here, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit. I'm just gonna freestyle it, have it kind of go around. So I think if you guys remember, I added these little white mm -hmm. circles. So I'm thinking that maybe we can add a gold circle somewhere. What do you think? Like I see there's like a little spatch of like white glitter there, do yeah. you see it? Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe like we'll draw a shape there. So let's see. Like you would put a little tiny circle like that. Honestly, you could even leave it like that. Like if you want, it. just kind of draw some attention mm -hmm. and then make like a little, oops, it's starting to get harder. And have it do that. I think it looks a little bit more balanced now. So now it's time to perfect your edges. Um, do you remember this first line that we did? Do you mm -hmm. see how it's thickening? Yes, yeah. Right. It's difference. no longer thin anymore. And difference. that's one of the last ones that we yeah. did. What I like to do is if you have excess, run it off the edge. Mm -hmm. um, because in this particular piece, we did decide to do the edges. So what I'm gonna do is literally just drip. And if not drip, follow it through, you know? Like that. Follow it through. Looks good. And gravity will do its thing. I think these sides are actually looking pretty decent. I think this is good. Okay, so if I'm being honest, looking at this right now, I'm really liking it. Mm -hmm. but, but again, with geode art pieces, the orientation always changes the look of your piece. Yes. So now the view that you guys probably have where you're seeing this on the top and then this on the bottom, your attention probably will go to this empty space here, right? 
Like when I'm looking at it from my point of view, this is all balanced, it's beautiful, it looks good. This looks like it's missing a little something. So I'm thinking maybe we'll replicate or mimic this little dot we got mm -hmm. going on, maybe someone over here. So, good idea. It's so Let's important to change see. your perspective. Yeah. yeah. See it from all angles. Especially if it's like a commission piece or if you're making it for someone as a gift, you never know what orientation they want to hang it in. So you want to make sure it looks good from every possible every, yes. every possible way, you know? Maybe like just a little dot somewhere here will be good. Fantastic. Yeah, so I, I think we're it. ready and we're done. Good job, Shelby. I love it, good job. I love <laughs> yours too and I love that you fixed it, you know, like, so you guys learn from her. I think it just goes to show, you know, how uh, forgiving this process is, exactly. how many options you have. And yeah. at every stage of the process, there's, so, you know, you can make adjustments. And exactly. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. I guess we're going to leave these overnight. Yep. And uh, we'll come back and show you our final them. pieces. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See you. So we're back and our pieces have cured and they look amazing. In fact, they look so good that we've already hung them up on the wall. Take a look. Shilpi, your piece looks fantastic. I love the blue and the gold together. It came together so beautifully. Oh my God, thank you. I love yours so much. I love how soft it is. I love the peaches, I love the pink. And you did an amazing job of making it into something that you love, you know? So, what did you guys think? I hope this tutorial inspires you to try making geode art of your own. And Shilpi, thank you so much for coming in to teach us and to share so many of your tips and yeah. tricks. You are an amazing teacher. Oh my God, no, she's an amazing student, right guys? Come on, like you watched her <laughs> learn. She picked up on things super fast. Honestly, it was such a great experience. Thank you so much to you and to the rest of the Art Resin team for reaching out to me and allowing me to be here to film this. I hope that you guys have learned something from this and if you guys do end up making your own geodes and art, please feel free to send me a picture or leave a picture down below, leave a comment below and let us know what you think. All right, so thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Yeah, bye. bye.